Welcome to Jada Live. How are you doing? It's 2.02 here in Las Vegas. It's a Saturday, that's why I'm in the kitchen. So, welcome to all the people from my circle of love. You guys have been with me since March 18 when I started this fun insanity of going live actually for 100 days every day. And then now we cut it down actually for the summer schedule to three times a week. And then, so we do Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Tuesday, we have uh, uh, the guest interview, celebrity interview. Then on Thursday, we have Italian culture and lifestyle. And Saturday, we are in the kitchen. And because three days was not enough, I decided to, and you guys were just saying, when are you singing? Remember, we couldn't sing on social media because of the music rights. I cannot even sing my own rights because they were blocking the video. So I started this Patreon page where on, sad, on Sunday we do what we call Love Song Sunday, which is a lot of fun because Patreon is like a private social media, media page. Uh, of course, I have to uh, uh, pay for the video and everything, but we've been doing actually, I think for more than a month every Sunday and many of you are there and I, I like to call the people from the Jedi like of my circle of love and the one that are on Patreon are my team, awesome. Why am I doing all this sign with my ants? Because here at Jada Live, we uh, really care uh, for people that are, um, you cannot hear. Uh, my friend Diane Ferentino, when we started with Jada Live, she has a son who is deaf, and she told me that deaf people during COVID-19, we are all wearing masks. They cannot read our mouth, mouth, mouth. So for them even to watch this uh, live video, it's kind of difficult. So I decided, to learn a little bit. So I do know a little bit of sign language, not very much, just a little bit, 
but I do my best thanks to my friend uh, Diane Fiorentino which I love very much this is the sign that I love you and I know you guys that have been watching me uh, know this sign very well if some of you are new here I see some new people appearing so welcome welcome in sign language welcome and let us know where you're watching from I see a lot of people appearing from New York City which I know is 5 p.m. 5.05 5 actually to be uh, correct Buonanotte quasi uh, almost good evening, good night uh, for the people that are watching from Italy because it's 11 at night, 22 for people in Ireland and England. And I see also Joyce appearing over there. She's watching from Australia, like many other. And of course, it's early in the morning. There is even 5 or 7 in the morning. So good morning. Buongiorno a voi che ci guardate dall'Australia. So if you are new, I am Giada Valenti, I am Ital I'm a singer and songwriter in sun, sun language. I was born and raised in Venice, Italy, uh, the city with the streets of water, and I do love to sing and I do love to cook. That's why today I am here cooking for all of you. One of my favorite recipes, I love everything that I cook, but this one I like it in the winter, in the spring, I like it in all season. And it's a very famous lasagna with ricotta and spinach, lasagna ricotta and spinaci, as we call it in Italy. It's gonna be uh, like all my recipe, very easy to make. Yes, yeah, lasagna, ricotta and spinaci. It's very easy to make. That's actually a big one, because in my family during COVID-19 is only me and JJ, I made a portion for two, a little bit, a big portion for two, but uh, let's say it's for two. But uh, so if you wanna, if your family is bigger, if you're like, like, lucky that you have more than two people in uh, your family, of course you uh, double and quadruple the things. I know that uh, my friend uh, Richie and uh, Janet have been making my recipe and they live by themselves. So, you know, you can also divide it in half and then you have a portion for one. You, Richard Hunger, you, Richie, were asking me a recipe for bucatini because you had last weekend bucatini apparently there in Liverpool. And I told you, Liverpool is a, um, I mean, um, bucatini is a pasta, it's a kind of pasta. Uh, with a hole inside so you have to let me know at least if it was made with red sauce or white sauce because of course pasta you can make it with whatever you want and by the way in sign language today we are making lasagna pasta which is signed for lasagna pasta with spinach and you make it with spinach, you make it with ricotta cheese, with mozzarella cheese, with parmesan cheese, uh, a little bit of salt, what else? We have butter, we have milk. So I'm gonna have in a second all the, the, um, the ingredients and, and it's gonna be fun to cook it together. But of course, at the end, by the way, we are also gonna keep this tradition that started in March, thanks to my dear friends Doug Hartline that I saw it there. Doug, how is the fire in California? talking about i know many of you are watching from california guys i have you in my prayer i hope that the fire is under control i know that the smoke is incredible because actually last week we woke up in the morning and we had a lot of smoke even here in las vegas we are five six hours from where the fire is and the whole uh, sky was covered the sky the sun was there but it was covered and then we went outside and we could smell the smoke so i can only imagine doug how um, difficult it is for you guys there in California, especially for you there in uh, Sacramento. So please be safe. I keep you in my prayer as uh, uh, you know. So stay safe, guys. And it makes me think actually that today it's Saturday and one week ago, one week ago, exactly today, I was in Kentucky. Yes, I was in Kentucky and I uh, sang after actually a couple of months, I sang at the Kentucky, the Kentucky, Derby, this is sign language for Derby, so this is the horse and this is the race there. So because of that, that inspired me, that's actually uh, uh, inspired me. And George, JJ, can you show the picture of the Kentucky Derby? Last week? So we flew to Kentucky, JJ and I, we haven't flown in, I think, seven months because the last time that I uh, went, uh, at my last concert was in Las Vegas, but the one previous was in Lone Tree, Colorado. And that's a picture of last week, as you can see, with some amazing, my dear friends, musicians, yes. For six months, I was not able to perform with musicians uh, because even though I do this Sunday live and I and I did some uh, I do every live streaming concert for you, I'm always by myself. You know, I sing with music tracks or accompanied by pianos by myself. So last Saturday I was in Kentucky, in Kentucky, at the Kentucky Derby, and I got to sing with musicians, which was kind of. Uh, 
great. And actually, I also had an audience. I always have an audience because you guys are my audience every Sunday and, and I adore you and I love you. But it was nice to have people, you know, reacting to my jokes and uh, applauding me. So I wish we can find a way that when we do these Patreon things that I could get to see you and hear your applause. I know you are applauding me because you tell me, but I can hear you. So I imagine, I have a good imagination, so I imagine that. And because I went at the Kentucky Derby, the Kentucky Derby has to do with horses. Last Thursday, with the episode with the Italian Living, I decided to take you to another tradition in Italy, which is Il Palio di Siena. JJ showed a picture before that they say is the Kentucky Derby on steroids because it's really it's kind of crazy. Some people, when I took you to Siena last week and I was talking about the Kentucky Derby, some people said, I'm not sure that's what the animals, the horses want. Me neither. Because I also tell you, if you remember, that when, when the horse won last week at the Kentucky Derby, around this time we were all watching from our television because the uh, uh, audience was not allowed at the Kentucky, Authentic, which is the horse that won, when they gave him, you know, the rug with the roses, he went bizarre. And the first person he put down was his uh, trainer. So I said to JJ, maybe he doesn't like his training. Maybe it's too hard on him. That would be me, you know, if I have a personal trainer on gym that, on the gym that makes me do, which remind me, my mother told me that when I was a little girl, I hated my doctor. The, the, the doctor I had was not very child friendly. So my mom said that uh, every time I, I could recognize his voice, I was very little. And she said that one day I walked inside the hospital to visit somebody else and I heard the voice of the doctor. And I left my parents, I went without even looking up, I recognized his voice and with my feet, I went against the leg of the doctor and I ran back because I didn't like the doctor. So maybe Authentic did the same, I don't know. I don't know about this race, if it's for the horses, if it's good or not, but uh, they are old traditions and we have to uh, accept it. I, uh, I, I hope, they, they look happy actually. I know they treat them very, very well because they are, I said actually last sun Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, when we were in Kentucky, I said to JJ, what do they do to these horses? They look like they are, they have, all, me, I'm Italian, of course, they were so shining. I said to JJ, what do they put, olive oil? They look like they were all into olive oil. They look spectacular. Guys, I think I talk enough, and today it's Saturday, and now, now we are going to be cooking something delicious. So, guys, we are going to be cooking the, one of my favorite lasagne with ricotta and spinach, with ricotta cheese and spinach. In a second, because before we do that one, you know me, I started this Jada Life and uh, some of you, was you actually guys, they said, which kind of wine can we drink with the things you are cooking? And me, I don't drink wine, I don't drink any kind of alcohol, so I had no idea. So I said, okay, so let's use this time at home and let's use this opportunity to learn uh, something more. So we did several journey into the planet of wine to learn more about wine and you guys loved it very much and we're going to do more and more. Actually on Monday I have an appointment with uh, somebody that deals with wine and alcohol so I'm going to have some news hopefully to share next week. But for the whole uh, three months I've been talking to you, uh, I, I have some friends, I was born actually in the region where they make uh, the most famous Prosecco and Pinot Grigio. And my friends of Bosco del Merlo, you see here my, the bottle of Prosecco, they send me so much Prosecco and uh, Pinot Grigio. So we've been doing a lot of things with Prosecco and Pinot Grigio. Of course, Prosecco, you can drink it later by himself with the recipe that we make today. So white wine goes very well. So white wine goes very well with what I will be cooking later. But we can also make delicious cocktails, like aperitivi before eating. So I made already one here for myself, as you can see. I haven't, I haven't tried it yet. And I'm going to be making one for JJ. So today we are making, let me open my card, because as I said, I don't know nothing about alcohol. We are going to make something called Prosecco Royale, which is actually, I've learned, I mean, let me take a card here, is a... Uh, something that is inspired by something French that is called Kir Royal that normally is made with champagne. Kir Royal with champagne. The Italian people, they made the Prosecco Royal and they use, of course, Prosecco. And I love to use the one of my friend Prosecco from Bosco del Merlo, which is my favorite. I'm going to show you, it's made, you can make it in five minutes and you can time me. Actually, I think it's even less than five minutes. When I make this one, it took me two seconds. So it's, uh, you have to mix a part of creme de cassis, which is an alcohol here, creme de cassis. So this is a cocktail, ladies and gentlemen, creme de cassis, uh, one part of creme de cassis, one tablespoon of lemon. Here it's your lemon. And then you have to have three parts of Prosecco, 
here, remember the white wine, and then you have to, uh, to have a couple of uh, blue blueberry, a couple of blueberry. Here I have them. I use, uh, I, I froze them because I have them in the morning with my smoothie. So even if they are frozen, it's nice because it's like adding ice uh, to your uh, glass. And this is how you're gonna make it. So you take uh, your, uh, that's the cart, Prosecco Royale. I like this, it sounds like uh, a James Bond cocktails, you know? What is a, a James Bond drinking? The Prosecco Royale. Maybe he's gonna do it on the next movie. So when JJ comes back to me, here we go. I'm reading there because I'm honest. I don't know how to make it. So I have to start, I think, with the creme de cassis, which is something fresh. Uh, French is a black currant. It's made uh, cassis, which I think is uh, actually our uh, blueberry, right, JJ? I think they're blueberry. It looks from the picture and it's very sweet. So they say here, one part of creme de cassis, so I would say, this is one part of creme de cassis. JJ, this is yours, so wish me luck that I'm making it properly. But JJ is so sweet, he's gonna have anything I make. Then they say here that we have to have one tablespoon of lemon juice. This is the one, one tablespoon of lemon juice. You can squeeze a lemon yourself, of course, me for being fast. I just bought lemon juice, which I love to drink in the morning, by the way, with hot water, it cleans your stomach if you wanna be healthy. And uh, so this is one. And then three parts of Prosecco. Here's my Prosecco of Bosco del Merlo. And we are gonna put it inside. So three parts. So I guess I have to fill the whole glass. Look at that. That looks fantastic. And of course, let's see if I can put the, my Prosecco back, back where it was. And then he said here to add a couple of blueberries. Can you see the blueberries? Here we go. I put them also in mine. I think this is enough. And then optional was that you could put a spring of thyme. I didn't uh, bought a spring of thyme because uh, I, I'm not gonna eat it. So I thought, waste still my money. And so this is mine. This is the one for JJ. JJ, this is to you. Mine lost the sparkles because I prepared it before. Chin chin JJ. So chin chin guys also to you. I'm gonna have a zip. Actually, it's delicious. It's very sweet, it's very fruity. And of course, you have uh, the kind of a bitterness of the Prosecco. And by the way, if you wanna keep uh, your Prosecco uh, sparkling, remember I told you the other time, when you put it in the refrigerator, you put a spoon, a little spoon like this one in your bottle and the sparkle is stay for at least two weeks, even three weeks. Sometimes I open a bottle of Prosecco because I'm not a big drinker, I put it there and it stays there. And JJ said, yeah, I lose a little bit, but okay. If you leave it completely without, even if you close, in a day or two, there is no um, bollicin anymore, there's no sparkle. If you put the, the spoon like that, it's better than to close it again. So this was our Prosecco Royale. I will be zipping it uh, before I'm gonna have my lunch. But guys, what do you say we're gonna eat? First of all, I wanna thank a couple of people. So let me think, oh yeah. I want to thank tomorrow, so I'm going to be your Patreon, and uh, I'm going to be Giada Valenti, the singer and songwriter. I will be singing tomorrow, so I want to thank all of you that are already part of my uh, Team Awesome. Guys, I love you, Team Awesome. Actually, for this month, you can watch, uh, you can watch every Sunday, but starting next month, $1, one Sunday, $5, two Sunday, $10, all the Sunday and if you want to join for more you're gonna get even more extra things that I will do for you and this morning I want to thank Bo Bob Bodak because he upgraded his donation from one to much more than that so thank you Bob God bless you thank you so very much and I also want to work welcome Adriana making do that she joined me this morning thank you for joining the team awesome welcome to the circle of love and everything I do I, it really means the world to me. So, Adriana, you're going to be with me tomorrow. Bob, you too, you've been with me. I see Antonio, I see so many of you. So tomorrow we're going to be singing. Of course, the whole week uh, we've been uh, doing events and birthday that I'm going to be doing, as I said, at the end of the program. It started with thanks to my friend uh, Doug Hartley, and now he's uh, homeschooling his own children, so I'm doing by myself. But I'm so grateful to you, Doug, for you have done it for four months. So thank you for that. Now, I'm doing by myself. So we have been doing birthday and event. And every time, of course, there are many musical things happening. And every time we pick up songs. So we already know that tomorrow there, we're gonna, I'm going to be singing Imagine. Because Imagine was released last week by uh, the Beatles. And um, 
I think there were a couple of country uh, singers that were born, so it's gonna be, oh yeah, Patsy Klein was born, so probably tomorrow we're gonna do Crazy, Crazy for B, you know that song, w by, written by Willie Nelson, and a few more, a few surprises, Because I Love You, because uh, Celine Dion, because you love me, no, because I love you, but because you love me, or Celine Dion, because Diane Warren was born last week, so, Tune tomorrow. If you haven't done it, go later when we're done with the Jada Live. You go on uh, patreon.com uh, slash Jada Valenti. JJ will show you the card and you can join me. And by the way, since September is Death Awareness Month, that's the page for Patreon to join me. To September, I said it's a very special month. September is Death Awareness Month. So we will be doing the whole month of September, like always some uh, nice things. And by the way, remember that if you want, you can also buy the uh, mask. Uh, we all need masks, right? The death awareness mask on my website, jadavalenti.com. And that's thanks to Diane and Catherine in uh, Florida that makes all those masks. And only a few of them left. So don't wait too long if you want to wear them. They are very nice. When you wear them, people smile at you. And they all say, is that death awareness? And you said, yes, I'm not deaf, but I'm supporting them, which I think is very, very cool. And it's something that is very dear and close to my heart. So thank you. I think I said everything. And now we're going to be cooking yes ladies and gentlemen we are gonna be cooking we are making the famous my famous lasagna with spinach and ricotta cheese so um i i made already some video in advance so we can go faster that's why i was talking so much because i'm gonna make it very very quickly so here is the recipe first of all the ingredients you need for the lasagna this is serving too so just double of uh for more people you need lasagna pasta you need uh, some fresh ricotta fresh parm uh, of frozen spinach i prefer to use the frozen and otherwise you have to buy a lot of them you need bechamel which is this white sauce that uh, you know i made a lot of time we made it also for all kind of lasagna in italy we need some mozzarella some parmesan cheese grated and a little test of uh, and nutmeg and to make the bechamel which is a french white sauce you need uh, only a few ingredients you need butter you need flour and a, a pinch of um, of uh, salt and that's it and milk of course that's all you need so uh, i'm gonna make it for you in a second i'm gonna be making bechamel but first i just uh, let's make the spinach so here are my spinach already uh, cooked and i have a little video that i show you how i cooked this spinach this morning jj is gonna start it so as i said i prefer to take the frozen uh, spinach but you can do it also with a fresh one so defrost your spinach these are frozen you defrost them when you have defrost them you need also some butter and some salt and of course you're going to take a skillet you uh, you melt your butter when the melt is um, uh, like that the butter i mean you had your uh, 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 not frost anymore but i'm frozen um, spinach that's what I did this morning. You're gonna add, you see in a second, a, a pinch of salt. Of, I mean, I, um, I don't like my, very much salt, so, but I would say one little, little a teaspoon of salt for the whole thing. And you, you, you cook it like we say, like I would say for 15 minutes max, because you know, the spinach are already cooked. Even if you use the fresh one, it, they don't need to cook uh, um, much longer. Why do I don't use the fresh? Because you need a lot of spinach. So yesterday I wanted to buy the fresh one, but uh, you know, they come in this big thing. So you have to buy at least three of those one to have the 250 gram that you need, 300 gram actually, which is, uh, I don't know, it's one and a half OZ. So if you buy the frozen one, one box of that one, it's enough to make uh, this one. Of course, um, so I cook my spinach, here they are. Uh, you can uh, uh, wait until they are uh, uh, not, um, you get them cooled a little bit before you had inside your uh, ricotta cheese. Here it's my de delicious ricotta cheese and here I show you in a second. Let me take a little spoon, where is my, my little, here it is. So you put your ricotta inside your um, spinach JJ show now the spinach the video spinach number two and basically you just do it like this and well you mash them all together perfect 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 it just take you a second as I always told you my recipe I have only a few ingredients and it's very easy to uh, to do so here we go so remember the spinach that are cooked with butter and salt and then you had your uh, ricotta cheese and here it's ready 
to be all put together and at this point uh, you uh, it's time for you to make the bechamel so here jj said to show it here it is this is a uh, spinach with some uh, ricotta cheese and some butter so it's spinach some uh, ricotta cheese and some butter that's all you need and, and a pinch of salt to make all these things so and then we're going to make the white sauce the bechamel i also made it already it's here as you can see and i have prepared a little video this morning when i make this one so you can see jj is going to start the video because then actually all the ingredients are ready to go and this is how you make the bechamel you have uh, you warm some milk not very hot just uh, medium uh, low heat and then you put some salt not much and then you put some uh, nutmeg inside and the butter and you let it cook for i would say like uh, uh, I don't know, like two minutes, not longer, and then you start to put uh, the flour, you stir the flour, you have uh, all the, um, make it a little bit uh, medium uh, liquid, not too, uh, you remember for some other re recipe, I suggested to make it liquid, now, this one just a medium kind of thing, you can see the consistency over there, and it's ready, and basically I have it here, I was just, here it is, and it's also delicious to eat like this, which is the same bechamel that we used to make the red lasagna, you know, the classic one with the meat. But today we are making this one with spinach because we need iron. Actually, I was talking to Diane that she's just like me. She's always a little bit uh, low on iron. So Diane, this is good for us because there is spinach from Papalo Sio Mare. So... Uh, and Diane is teaching me all these signs and every time I'm like, am I doing it right? She said, I'm great, but I don't know. I, I've learned to say this, Diane, that I know little sign language. So I'm not perfect like you. Diane can talk sign language like this, you know, and I'm like, whoa, she gave me this video. I'm like, oh, maybe one day, you know, maybe one day. I've learned to say hello and welcome and I love you and circle of love and we are cooking. So. I made my spinach, I made my bechamel, and ladies and gentlemen, now it's time to put all these things together. Let me put my computer for a second here so I have more space, even though I need it later for the birthday and event. So this is something I bought uh, yesterday, actually, because I had a big one, and I like my lasagna a little bit higher, but if you have a, a glass one that is uh, less uh, high, I mean, this, this, this lasagna, because it's a little bit liquid, because there is a lot of uh, liquid stuff and not much pasta, at least the way I make it, it's nice if it's a little bit high like this one. So this is what we uh, basically do. I would say we start with a little bit of uh, bechamel and you put it on the bottom of your... How do you call this, JJ? These glass things for the oven? Glass, glass oven tray. An oven tray. Ah, I was missing the words. Una terrina da forno in italiano. So this is an oven tray. So you put just a little bit of on the bottom of your bechamel and you take your pasta and by the way uh, I'm using today the normal pasta this one but I also sometimes make it with a pasta like this one which is a lasagna pasta uh, all wheat it's uh, it's it has a little bit more of a bite but decide today I decided to make it is already healthy with the spinach to put also with that one was too healthy but you can also i know many people don't want to have carbs so you can also make it with quinoa pasta with bean pasta there are many variation of pasta and i told you for the pasticcio you can use them all because they're good so i'm going to use the normal pasta here it is so i put the bechamel and we start to make our lasagna and you put a pasta over there and what guess what we're doing we take a little bit more of your um, bechamel and you put them on the bottom and then I have a different spatula that I think works better. And you just make sure that it goes all over the bottom of your oven tray. I've learned now the oven tray. Here we go. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. And at this point, guess what? We are going to be putting some of our spinach with ricotta. One and two. As I said, I don't put much pasta, so it's more... Um, it's more ricotta actually, and it's more, more ricotta and spinach than pasta, but if you want to uh, have more pasta, uh, you can have more pasta and a little bit less uh, uh, spinach and sauce in between. So here is your thing. At this point, you cut some mozzarella, fresh mozzarella in little pieces. You put some mozzarella over there, so easy it is, like that. A little bit of Parmesan cheese. 
And here we go. And guess what? We are gonna put another thing of pasta. So you put it there, as you see, there are some little space. So what I do, I break the pasta in half and I cover that little space. There we go. Can you guys see? And guess what? We are gonna put more bechamel. So easy it is. I told you, if I can make it, anybody can make it. I know some of you always say, hey, I'm not a chef. Hey, me neither. Far from it. I'm just an Italian singer, born and raised in Venice, that loves to eat good food. I love food. Actually, a few days ago, I posted a picture because it was um, I Love Food Day. I think it was last uh, Monday. It was I Love Food Day. And I said, it must be working for all the rest of the world. For us Italians, we love food every day. Not only that Monday, but was it September something. So here, at this point, we put more of our spinach. And voila. You make sure it goes all over your pasticcio. Here we go. We call it also pasticcio, by the way. Another word for lasagna in Italy is pasticcio, which means, uh, uh, what is pasticcio, JJ? When something is, you know, wrong, or something bad made. So, because pasticcio is a little bit a mess. That's why I'm so good in making it. It's like a mess. So here's the, the spinach. We put extra mozzarella. Here we go. Yes, leave some for, and then we put some Parmesan cheese. You understand, so you make as many layers that you want to do. If you want, if you think this is enough for you, you can stop. It doesn't have to be as high as I, I like it higher. So at this point, you put extra pasta again. Here we go. And if you see you want to cover up those spaces, you put a little piece over there. The pasta breaks very easily, so you cover up all of them. Remember, it's a pasticcio, it's like a, a little disaster, so it doesn't have to be like an engineering construction, which, it, which makes this one a perfect recipe for me to make, because it doesn't need to be. So I finish all my bechamel here. More or less, for two, you will see on the ingredients, you need uh, like a cup. A cup of, of it. I told you I make it very liquid, no liquid, with a lot of, uh, I like uh, not much the pasta per se, I like uh, the spinach and the ricotta and I do love the cheese. So you can make the layer a little bit smaller and you can make more pasta in between if you like more pasta. I know Jenny, Jenny, you, you made, you made uh, Jenny made, uh, Dolly made one of my um, pasta cake and then she apologized when she sent me the picture. By the way, if you do, if you cook one of my recipes, send me a picture. And she said, sorry, Jad, I put a lot of cheese, but I love it. So she made the pasta cake that I made and she, she sent me a spectacular picture. And then there was a lot of cheese. Hey, this is freedom. A, we are in the United States, it's freedom. Everybody can do whatever you want, as long as you use fresh ingredients. So guess what? We are gonna put the rest of the spinach on top of it. As you can see, I have a lot of spinach. I told you I really love the spinach. So I'm gonna put this one aside and we're gonna finish our lasagna. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you make sure that you have your uh, spinach all over the place and guess what? What do you think is coming next? I'm sure you're all guessing it right. This is what we are gonna do. We're gonna finish the mozzarella Let's put some good mozzarella on top of it so it's gonna be nice because we're gonna put it in the oven at the, I would say 380 for my oven which is an, an electric oven for um, 40 minutes I would say. So let me move all the stuff here. I would say 40 minutes and here we go. We're gonna put the rest of our Parmesan cheese, not the rest actually, just a little because I show you something that you can do. So here it is with Parmesan cheese. Believe it or not, we made it. How long is it? It's 2.33. We started at 2.05. This one, you're gonna put it in the oven, as I told you, at 380 Fahrenheit. Uh, my is an electric oven for a total of 40 minutes. So this is the one that, of course, when this one, the lasagna ricotta and spinach. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, I'm gonna take now out of the oven one I made this morning. So I'm gonna have a lot of lasagna. Yes, when it's cool, 
cold, you can cut it in pieces, the, 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 the portion that you are going to need if you are along one portion, if you do two people, two portion, and you can refrigerate it. You can put it in the freezer and you can leave it there even for one month. And then when I was touring, when we were doing concert, I always had food like that in uh, the, the freezer when I was coming back for the concert. No time to cook anything. I take it out, I cook in the micro microwave or I put it back in the oven for like 15 minutes and it comes back. And actually the longer it stays in the tray, the better it is because all the ingredients go inside the pasta and everything tastes like everything is just amazing. So this one is going into the oven and I'm gonna take out for you, ladies and gentlemen, the one I made this morning. Here we go. Voila! This is the one I make this morning. As you can see, it's nice and uh, crusted on the, the, the top. I actually also put it on, what do you call it here? They call it, uh, no bake? They call broil. You can also broil it in the last moment for uh, like five minutes so it gets nice and crusty on the top. Look at this. And uh, this is still kind of hot, but it's uh, ready to eat. And I always like to decorate my food, uh, so what I do normally, what I've done this morning, look what I made. I made a chip of cheese with the shape of the heart, because of course I love about the love songs, I sing love songs, I promote love, and I have to make uh, love even when I make some food. So to make this one, JJ can show you, it's very easy, they're made with Parmesan cheese, but you can also make them of Pecorino cheese. I use them a lot, you can shape it as a heart, of a, to shape it as a heart, by the way, I have these little things that you can make cookie normally, but uh, you can shape them round, square, any kind of shape you have, and I prepared a little video this morning when I was making them, so you know how to make them, here it is. You put the Parmesan cheese or whatever cheese you want to put in, you give in a, you, you push it down a little bit with a spoon and then you put the, in a skillet that, that, is, uh, that doesn't stick, like this one, then you cook it for, I would say like two minutes until it gets a little bit brown, you see, you take it out of uh, your um, oven and this is the result. I'll show you here in a second, i show you before. And by the way, you can, I, I'm gonna put it to decorate. Here I have one extra, I make one extra one. They're really like little chip. You can eat them, they are delicious. They're like uh, chips made of cheese. I know JJ said, I wanna have it one. JJ, you wanna have it? JJ is having the chips. And ladies and gentlemen, here it is. Before I cut it, I forgot I have here a basket of present. Can you guys see? Janet, are you watching? You guys are amazing. So yesterday I received from my friend Janet who also gave me this beautiful apron that I'm always wearing. I asked her, she sent me a few months ago, she sent me these products that I really love. This is a kind of a water for the sun and this is the body lotion. As I wish guy, you had, uh, you could, can you see what it is? You have to smell, they smell fantastic and especially this body lotion is so good for the skin. So I, I was asking Janet, where did you got it? And never I knew, she sent me many of them. She sent me also makeup. By the way, Janet, you sent me makeup, I'm already wearing it. She sent me two beautiful high shadow that I'm already using. One is from MAC and one is from Urban Decays, two of my favorite things. And I also wanna thank, from Cincinnati, actually not from Cincinnati, near Cincinnati, Miamisburg, my friend Ronnie Manicotti that also sent me this fantastic jam. There are three actually, and one is an apple butter, one is a gooseberry jam, and one is a, um, orange pin and apple jam. Maybe I have to make a dessert one of these days using this. So guys, thank you very much for always sending me this present. You guys are amazing. I love you, I love you, I love you. So I'm gonna, um, Put this one actually in the oven for a second because I'm gonna read the birthday and events, right, JJ? And then we're gonna cut it and eat. So I'm gonna put it in the oven for a second so it stays warm, guys. And very quickly, we do birthday and events because it's a tradition. It's a, uh, Diane, how do we say a tradition? Here at the Jada Life, we love birthday and event. Here we go. Memorable mention for two, yesterday. In 1773, after defeating the British at the Battle of, of, of Plattsburgh, during the war, uh, during the war of uh, 1812, Benjamin Franklin writes something that is really there to me. He said, "They won, but he wrote, there never was a good war or bad peace." 
how clever was that man. And um, also yesterday in 1847, the first singing of the Stephen Foster, Susanna in Pittsburgh, by the Knenes Opera Troupe in the uh, Ingle Ice Cream Saloon, which I guess is not existing, is a famous place for music. And a year later, of course, O Susanna became a national anthem everywhere. If you're not familiar, he also wrote My Old Kentucky Home, by the way, which is the song I sang last week at Kentucky. They say he's the father of the American music. And these were the lyrics, I make you live. Well, I came from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. And a bound for Louisiana, my own true love for to see. I said, oh, Susanna, don't, don't you cry for me. As I come from Alabama with my banjo on my knees. How funny how this country is somewhere, right? And we know this song in Italy too, believe it or not, with Italian lyrics. Crazy. Now, also yesterday, in 1941, the construction of the Pentagon begins in Arlington County, Virginia, and it will be completed on January 15, 1943, which brings me to an event that happened yesterday that had to do also with the Pentagon. Of course, yesterday was 9-11. Uh, it's, uh, it's, been, it's, very, it's been very personal to me. I lived in New York City for 11 years. We moved to New York from, uh, from actually from London just a few years after 9-11. And I guess we all remember 9-11 because we all know where we were the day that uh, really that tragedy happened. So 3,000 innocent people die and the world has really changed after that event. So. I think we should never forget and we will never forget 9-11. So God bless to all the spirits and the souls that left at the day day. And thank you for all the people, the service to um, rescue and, and clean up the ground zero, which was a disaster. Which bring us to today, September 12th. And here, this is what happened in history. In 1755, we go to Venice. We have to go to Venice for a second because today in 1755, Giacomo Casanova is sentenced for five years in prison, but uh, without a trial and to affront religion and common decency. You know, the man was kind of very on the edge. And he was uh, sentenced to uh, go, of course, to the famous uh, prison Ipiombi. Uh, I'm from Venice, Italy. We talk about in one of the episodes of Jada uh, Live. Ipiombi was one of the considered one of the worst uh, prison uh, ever because of the uh, condition, very humid and hot and very cold, cold in the winter. And not many people know where they are in Venice. I'm always uh, wonder. You know, we have Il Ponte dei Sospiri, the Bridge of Scythe. We talk about it. Many people don't know that actually takes you from the court on one side, Palazzo Ducale, the Ducal Palace, the bridge takes you to the prison. So the other side, the white building is the prison that you can still can go and visit. And it's called the Bridge of Sight because actually you see on that window, that's the view that they had of the outside world. It was said it was the last time that they could see the outside world and they were sighting. Well, Casanova escaped, of course, as you may know, as the only person ever, he called the flight, Il Mio Volo, he wrote a book about it. So if you wanna know more about it, you can watch Java Live we've been talking about. And also today in 1828, coming back to the United States, in New York City to be precise, Catherine Heber, some, an actress we love, has her stage debut in The Night Hostess using a name of Catherine Burns. She was, of course, um, she got the attention of all and a few years later, to be precise, in 1933, she will uh, star in the first movie called Morning Glory that we sh will also uh, bring her to win the first of the fourth Oscar that she won. And today, in 1933, believe it or not, Leo Silzart, while walking and waiting for a red line in London, yes, for you guys there in London, he conceives the idea of a nuclear reaction. He patented the idea of a nuclear um, uh, reactor in 1934 and of course the result was uh, a few years later of the Manhattan project that built the atomic bomb good or bad I don't know but anyway that happened today and in 1935 the millionaire Hawa Huge flies his own design plane at a very high altitude of 352 and comma 46 m what is mile per hour JJ of course Martin Scorsese made a, one of my favorite movies called The Aviator with Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Blanchett that tells the story of this incredible crazy man because you know me I'm not a hero when it comes to flying I'm not a hero when it comes to do this kind of crazy thing so it's, if you haven't seen the movie The Aviator they won several Oscars a nice movie to see is on Netflix and 1940 today four teenagers following their dog about coincidence 
um, down a hall in Lascaux, France, discover a 17,000 years old drawings now known as the Lascaux Cave Painting. About coincidence, one get the idea of a nuclear uh, while traveling the, the crossing the, the, the street, and they follow the dog and they find this amazing painting, unbelievable. And today, in 1964, the film started. Uh, uh, it actually was released today, a film that started a genre, it's called the Spaghetti Western. Uh, the film was called in America, a fistful of dollar, directed by Sergio Leone, Italian director and premieres, and he's starring, uh, for the first time, actor Clint Eastwood. And you see there on the right, of course, the Italian poster, because in Italian it was called Un per un pugno di dollari, which is the translation of a fistful of dollar. Happening also today in, in 1981, the Smurfs animated cartoon series by Hannah uh, and Barbera was first broadcast in America and became a major success. And a few months later, we got it in Italy too, with the title I Puffi. Yeah, I loved it also when when I was young, and of course everybody loved the Puffy. We still love them. And in 1998, Lauren Hill's solo album, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill, there's the cover, has its debut at number one in the USA. And one of the songs that was recorded, maybe people don't know, was I Can't Take My Eyes Off of You. And I was thinking maybe it's a good song to sing tomorrow for the Jada uh, Love Song Sunday on Patreon. By the way, if you want to join me tomorrow, please do it at the Patreon, patreon.com slash Jada Valenti. And we come at the birthday, and we have some memorable mention. There he is, Tom Dreesen. Yesterday, he has his birthday. He turns 81. He was born in Chicago, Illinois. And he was, as you can see on the picture, he was one of my favorite guests, actually. I loved him at the Jada Live. To be honest, it was it happened already, can you believe, June 16th. June 16th. So I spoke with him yesterday, and he's doing great. He says a lot to everybody. He still has such amazing memory. And if you want to catch the interview, very amazing interview. I know you, uh, probably is one of your favorite of all of you. His stories, I mean, he worked for Frank Sinatra for 20 years, are amazing story. And his book is great. So happy birthday to you, Tom. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you happy birthday dear Tom happy birthday to you and many more because 81 is just a number and also yesterday another person that I was lucky enough to meet and it happened to be one of my favorite musicians in 1967 Harry Connick Jr. was born pianist and singer was born in New Orleans Louisiana actually he was guest many many years ago I got to meet him uh, in Holland as he was guest in one of the television shows that JJ that is now behind the camera was producing same show we had Andrea Bocelli, Celine Dion and Harry Connick Jr. Very nice guy. I love Harry Connick. Maybe I should see if I can get in contact with him, having uh, to be my guest on one of these Tuesdays, which we come to the birthday of today, September 12th, 1888. Maurice Chevalier, French actor and singer. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Evan, for the little girls. Do you remember that movie? Yes, he was born today in Paris, France. And in 1931, famous country singer George Jones is born in Saratoga, Texas. He was nicknamed the Possum because his eyes were a little bit uh, close one to another, as you can see. There is, as I already told you, I watched last week this beautiful documentary called um, uh, Country Music, actually, done by uh, Ken Burns on PBS, but now it's available on Amazon Prime. Should you have it, watch it. It's four episodes. Amazing. You're going to learn a lot about American history in the music. And and in 1944, today, R&B singer Barry White, who had a man with a low voice, there he is, he was born, Bar Bar Barry Eugene Carter, that's the real name, and he was born in Galveston, Texas, another Texas cowboy. In 1957, film, film composer, I love him, Hans Zimmer, was born today in Frankfurt, Germany. There he is, he's known for uh, many scores of winning movies, like The Lion King, The Gladiator, we talk about it uh, because it was filmed in Siena, some part of The Gladiator, so we talk about last Thursday, and of course The Dark Knights, uh, just to mention a few, and a uh, few more, uh, and we are done for today, actually 1974, country singer Jennifer Nettles of Sugarland, the one that I adore, was born in Douglas, Georgia, and turns 46 years young. Look how spectacular, beautiful she is. And we go back to Italy for a second, where in 1978, another person I was uh, lucky to meet, Elisabetta Canalis, Italian model and actress, a former girlfriend of George Clooney. Yes, she was together with him in the Lake of Como. Look at them. Was born in Sassari, so in Sardinia. 
and turns 42 years old. She lives now in Los Angeles, that's why I got to meet her. And last two of the day, 1981, Jennifer Edson, American singer and actress, was born in Chicago, Illinois, and turned 39. Of course, she's a, a former contestant of American Idol and went on to win an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for her role in the Dream Girls movie in 2007. And is another one I got to meet actually in Florida, Mara Lago, at the club that uh, now uh, is still open. At the time, he was not president, Donald Trump owns and she was there on the same night I was performing. And in 1993, Kelsey Ballerini, yes, she is Italian, but she's a country girl, country singer and songwriter, is born in Mascot, Tennessee and turns 27 years old. So happy birthday to all these spectacular, fantastic people. And uh, this, I'm going to take again my lasagna that we made today, my fantastic lasagna. The other one is cooking. This one is getting hot. Here we go. And here is the lasagna that we made today, ladies and gentlemen, with, remember, spinach and ricotta cheese. Easy, delicious. And I'm going to take a plate and I'm going to cut it down. Let me take out my computer. We don't need it. There it is, the lasagna. There are the ingredients. As all my recipe, just a few ingredients, as you can see, you need... Um, Lasagna pasta, French ricotta, fresh frozen, fresh or frozen spinach, bechamel that you know, I, I told you how to make it, mozzarella, parmesan cheese, and a little bit of nutmeg. And then below also the ingredients to make how to make the bechamel. By the way, I will be starting soon at a YouTube channel where you can see only the recipe. So you're gonna have all these long things in 10 minutes because that's how long it takes you to make this recipe. And uh, you're gonna find also the video on how to make my delicious, uh, uh, how shall I call it, like uh, uh, patatine di formaggio, so it's going to be like uh, cheese chips, cheese chips. I made it with parmesan cheese, and here we go. We are going to cut our lasagna, as I said, the portion are a little bit big, so I'm going to cut them not so, so big, and here we go. Raise them with carefully, and you put them on your plate, and voila, and I'm going to put my heart on there. Actually, this is one. Can you see it, guys? I can smell the... I I do, I, guys, I hope you love spinach. I, I can smell the spinach and I love them. I'm going to make one portion also for myself. And as you said, there is a little bit of leftover. Not to worry. As I said, you can keep them in your fridge and eat them uh, later at night of uh, the day after. Or, let me cut it better, or you can freeze them. That's the good things about this kind of uh, food. You can freeze them and you can eat them another time when you come back from, you know, when we can, we can travel that we don't have time to cook. You take it out, you defrost it, and as I said, the longer they stay all together, the delicious they are. I'm gonna put my little heart on top of it, and I'm gonna serve this one to JJ. JJ, my love, this is for you, Bon Appetito. Look how pretty is this one. Bon Appetito, and I'm gonna take a fork, and I'm gonna have a bite. Guys, this is the moment when I wish that you were here with me, so. Mmm. Guys, I hope you're going to make it. It's just super delicious. Mm, 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 mm. Guys, if you make it, please take a picture. And if you have questions, leave your questions over there and I will answer them all. You know, guys, I do that all the time. So I'm going to have my... Uh, I think I didn't forget to say anything. I'm going to just say, ci vediamo domani. We'll see you tomorrow in sign language. So see you tomorrow. I love you. This is the thing I really... Do love you all, and we are friends and family. I need two hands to say you have become in this six months together. You have become from friends. Now you are my family, and the one of you that are on my team, awesome, my team, awesome guys. I love you even more because you're really supporting me to do what I love the most. I love the cooking. I love the drinking since a couple of months, but I really love to sing. And uh, your support on my Patreon means the universe to me, not the world. So I'm gonna have. A chin chin for you, that's the page out to join me on Patreon. The concert, as you see, is not really a concert. The fun event is tomorrow at 2 p.m., 5 p.m., Ora 23 in Italia. 
Uh, I know many of you have already joined. Some of you haven't, no. I saw Antonio Delisi who is there. I can read Jenny is there, Antonio, uh, Janet is there. Thank you, uh, Christina. Oh, Christina is there. You're in Los Angeles. She's another wonderful singer. Diane Fiorentino, Lisa Marie De Rosa, Jenny, Jenny again. Let's see. Oh, Salma is there. Hello, Salma. Las Vegas people, Hugo Costa. I don't know where you're watching from. Bob, of course. You are part of my team also, and I love you. And uh, um, Katie, where are you? Yummy. Where are you wanting? Carl, Carl Dion Dixon. Where are you watching from? Probably you said it before. Road. Oh, Rogia, thank you very much. You always share my video. By the way, th please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done it. And if you're watching from Facebook, like my fan page, the one with the like, not the one where we are friends, but the one with the like, because that's where I post more of my thing. And if you're watching from Periscope and tweet and uh, Twitter of Twitch, thank you guys and uh, for being on my page. And I'm going to be seeing you tomorrow for uh, the Love Song Sunday, and then I'm gonna be seeing you on Tuesday with a fantastic, amazing uh, singer. And by the way, she also like to have a chin chin. She's the daughter of the one and only Dean Martin. So join me on Tuesday to have a conversation with my dear friend and amazing singer and human being, Dina Martin, same time, same place. And hopefully she's gonna raise a glass too. So probably I'm gonna have a chin chin with Dina on Tuesday. I'm gonna make sure I have my Prosecco ready on Tuesday to have a chin chin with Dina. Dina, if you're watching, I love you. I see you on Tuesday. I cannot wait. Guys, I'm gonna have a zip of this and a piece of my lasagna and I say you, I love you and ci vediamo domani for Love Song Sunday. Thank you for being with me. Chin chin e buon appetito. Ciao. Dear old Danke schön, thank you for seeing me again. Though I'm here in my solitude, I know you are there, and in my heart I smile again. And so I sing here in my solitude, waiting. See you same time, same place, and I can't wait to say again. Danke schön, danke schön, danke schön, dear all our fiddles. See you tomorrow. A domani.